Hello everybody. In this tutorial, what I want to show you is how you can very simply set up a ragdoll character to use in your game. Uh, we'll cover setting up the ragdoll, but we're also going to cover how you can create a controller script to turn the ragdoll effect on and off and reset it if you need to. So make sure you stick around the whole video for that. Um, but for now, let's get straight into it. All right, I'm starting with a very simple Unity scene. Uh, set up. So what I have is just a ground 3D plane just for our character to land on. And this is our character. His name is Ethan, apparently. And Ethan is from the Unity Standard Assets. So you can go download that for free and follow along exactly if you wish. Or you could use your own character that you've modeled in some other software. Um, the important part is you just need a character with T-pose and a full bone structure. So if I go up into the transform, you can see the transform hierarchy. Ethan has hips, he has a spine, left leg, right leg, uh, upper upper part of the leg, and you'll see in a moment all the components you're gonna need. To turn Ethan into a ragdoll is very simple. So what we're gonna do is on our uh, hierarchy, we're gonna right click and we'll go 3D object and we'll go ragdoll. And this is gonna bring up the ragdoll wizard. Okay, and so what it wants us to do is drag in all the transforms of these various elements. So we'll go through our hierarchy of Ethan and we'll drag across all of these parts. Um, so let's fully expand Ethan's hierarchy just so we can make sure we get the right part. So Ethan's head, where, where is your head, Ethan? There it is, Ethan's head. So that's the transform of the head, copy that over. And I will go ahead and do this very quickly. All right, now that I've gone ahead and added all those components in, I'm going to go ahead and just accept the default mass and strength. If you were dealing with other physics, maybe you want something a little more realistic for mass. So perhaps you want this to be represented in pounds relative to other objects in your game. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to create uh, a ragdoll using the defaults. And that's all we needed to do to create our ragdoll. But what has that actually done? Well, if I come and click on Ethan's skeleton, you can see all of these various colliders that have been added. So it's gone ahead and taken those limbs that I submitted to the ragdoll wizard, and it's added a collider to them and a rigid body. And some of the limbs, say the uh, left leg, for instance, also has this character joint uh, component added to it. And so with all these sort of combined, this will create the ragdoll effect. Now, if I click back on Ethan's skeleton, you can see that they're not quite right. They don't look quite right. So you may want to go back and adjust some of the values on the colliders or some of the uh, you know, values for the joints. Uh, uh, you can change how much they swing and, you know, how much they're connected together. I'm not going to go into too much detail into that in this video, but I encourage you to go and experiment with uh, some of those different values. So let's hit play and check out our ragdoll in effect. But before I do that, what I'll do is I'll turn off the third party controller scripts because I don't need them in this example. And I will just disable the animator for now since the animator and the ragdoll are going to be conflicting with each other. So with the animator turned off, I'm just going to hit play and we will see Ethan falls to the ground like a lump. Perfect. So what happens if I did that, but with the animator turned on? You're going to see that the two are in total conflict. Well, although that may be the effect you're after, uh, chances are you're not. So what we need to now do is create a script that will allow us to have Ethan work under his animations and our controller until we want the ragdoll physics to kick in. So to do that, what we'll do is go and create a new script and we'll call it ragdoll controller. And this is going to be attached to, uh, the Ethan's top level in the hierarchy. So part of, on that script and we will open that script. Okay, so we have our script open now. And the first thing that we really want to 
do is get the default T pose uh, so that when we can reset it when we want to. Um, and in order to do that, we need to get the position and the rotation of all the various limbs. So let's go ahead and do that. And so we'll need to store all that information. And so what we'll do is create a private list and it will be of type vector three and we will call it child positions and we will want uh, another list to store the rotations so it will be of type quinterion and this will be the child rotations okay so in start we'll go ahead and we'll need to define those lists so we'll just go child positions is equal to a new list of type vector three and we'll go child rotations is equal to a new list of type quinterion and uh, then we'll create a private method called get t pose and so this is where oh, uh, we will go ahead and get all those values so in order to do that, we will rely on get components in children. And so uh, that will return for us a, an array of transforms. So we'll define an array of transforms and we'll just call it children. And we'll go get components in children, get component, uh, I want plural. get components in children. And we want them of the type transform. And then for each uh, of those transforms, we will save out uh, in children. Uh, we will save those positions and rotations to our list. So we'll go child positions dot add and we will go trans so the transform we're just looking at in our list and we will get the uh, local position now the local part is going to be important we do we don't want necessarily in terms of world position oh child rotation uh what have i spelled wrong i spelled my Probably spelled everything wrong, actually. Trans dot local rotation. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get this at the start. So right after we define our list, we will then get the T-pose. Now, the other thing we need to be able to control is whether the animator is turned on or off. So we need a private reference to the animator. So we'll go private animator Whoop. see i'm really terrible at spelling animator and we will call it just animator and we will go ahead and get that component in start get component of type animator okay now that we've got or established our get t pose or our default position for our character control object uh, now we want a script that will be able to turn the ragdoll on or off so what i'm going to do is we'll get rid of update because we don't need that uh, and we'll create a public method because we're likely going to want to call it from another script public void and we'll go ragdoll and we'll say on and what we're going to do is we're going to take a type of boolean because we're going to have the same method uh for turning the ragdoll on and off so what we'll do is we'll go take a boolean and we'll go rag doll and so if the boolean comes in as true we'll set the ragdoll on and the player will uh collapse uh if the rag if it's supplied with a false the ragdoll will be turned off and the animator will uh take over so in order to do that, we're going to rely on the get components in children, just as we did for the T pose, 
except this time we're interested in getting all of the various rigid bodies of our limbs. And we're going to set them to kinematic, uh, depending on whether we want to turn the ragdoll on or off. So to do that, we will first define an array of rigid bodies, and we will call it bodies. And we will get the get components in children. Uh, get components in children. And we want all of the rigid bodies. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop for through each of those for each of the rigid bodies in our bodies array. And what we'll do is we'll set the rigid body to is kinematic. And depend if the method is supplied with a true variable, uh, we want is kinematic to be false. So we'll do the opposite of what is supplied. Ragdoll. And so if it's false, then this will set is kin kinematic to true and the ragdoll won't work. If it's supplied as true, uh, then is kinematic is false and uh, it will act like a ragdoll. Hopefully that part made sense. Uh, the other thing we want to do um, is turn the animator on or off. So if uh, we'll set animator is enabled, once again, uh, the opposite of whether it's uh, going to be on or off. So ragdoll. So if uh, the ragdoll, if we want the ragdoll on and we supply this with a true, then we will turn the animator off. If this is supplied as false, therefore we want the ragdoll off, uh, we will supply, uh, we'll turn the animator on. And so what we will do is we will uh, set ragdoll uh, to start as false. So we do not want the ragdoll on to start with. So when the game starts, it's going to rely on the animator of the object. Now we're not quite done. The other thing I might want to do is reset the ragdoll. So if I turn the ragdoll on at any point, then try to perhaps load it back into an object pool, for instance. It's going to keep all the velocities and the various uh, transform rotations for after the ragdoll effect. So we want to be able to reset it back to our T-pose uh, if we want to, say, recycle the object. Um, so to do that, we'll create another method and we'll make it public again. The public void reset ragdoll. Okay, so if we're going to reset the ragdoll, first we need to make sure the ragdoll is not on. So we'll go ahead and set all the components to is kinematic. And then we will go through and uh, turn all of the transform items uh, back to their original T pose. So we will once again get reference to all the transforms in the children. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy the code from get T pose. And except this time, rather than adding the components to a list, we will set them. So we don't need the for each actually, we'll get rid of that. Instead, we'll create a general for loop. So we'll go for i and we want to the length of children. So go through all of our children and we will go children at the current looped position and we will set its local position uh, equal to child position. So the same position in our uh, list. Now, a note of caution with this is if you've changed the transform in any way, if you've added components, say maybe you added a weapon to the hierarchy, this will not work. So this will only work if you keep uh, the hierarchy identical to when we started and got the T-pose originally. So children, so we'll just set the 
uh, local rotation back. Local rotation is equal to child dot rotations at point i. Okay, so that's our ragdoll controller set up. Now, just for the sake of demonstrating this, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll put update back. And what I'll create is just a public Boolean. And I will say rag, uh, whoop, ragdoll test. Uh, and we will set that equal to false. And so what I'll do just for demonstration purposes, every update, I will just say um, ragdoll on, uh, what, no, we'll, we'll go if ragdoll test equals true, we will say ragdoll on is equal to true. And so that will turn our ragdoll on. And what I'll create is another public bool called reset ragdoll. And we'll set that to false. Again, this is just for testing uh, or demonstrating to you that this works. And we'll go if reset ragdoll is true. I want to do that up here. Uh, if the reset ragdoll is true, public bool. Oh, I've used the same name. That's why it's upset. Uh, reset ragdoll test. There we go. Uh, so if reset ragdoll test, what we will do is we will call reset ragdoll. Okay, with all that in place, let's jump back over into Unity and just see it unfold. Uh, fingers crossed. So if I go back to my character, you can see I've got the ragdoll controller there and it's got my booleans for testing. But if I just hit play, we can see that ragdoll is not on and it's just operating under the con animator controller. So if I had a controller script, I can move them around and uh, the animator will take care of all the movements. Um, and then if I turn ragdoll, ragdoll test on, boom. And the character is suddenly a ragdoll. The animator has been turned off and physics has taken over, which is perfect. Uh, well, let's say I wanna add this character back into the object pool. Uh, what I can just do is hit uh, ragdoll reset test and hopefully, voila, it's reset exactly back to how it started. And that's it. And that's how you create a ragdoll character and importantly, uh, a very simple controller script uh, for your games. So if you like this video, please subscribe and uh, click the link below if you want to get access to the script and uh, skip all the uh, typing yourself. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.